Today on Karamo. I'm 38 and now. Like, what is going on? LaToya has always had questions about John being her father. It just doesn't make sense. And then after a Christmas prank gone wrong, <sighs> if I did that to my mama, she'd have knocked me. Her mother admitted. I said, oh, I forgot about him. Her real father could be this man, Tony. I don't know if I'm his oldest child, his only child. I don't know anything. Tony is here. He doesn't care. Tony, do you care at all? No, not really. <laughs> and the outcome of the DNA test is here. Are you ready for answers? I really hope that Tony's not my dad. And these unforgettable results will lead to one of the most shocking twists this show has ever seen. Welcome to the show, friends. So my next guest, LaToya, pulled an epic prank on her mother, Vicky, faking a DNA test. You see, LaToya says she took a DNA test with her father that revealed that he was not her biological father. But the joke was really on LaToya. To her surprise, her mom admitted that the man LaToya knew as her dad possibly wasn't. But a man named Tony could actually be her father. LaToya's story is a DNA mystery 38 years in the making. Let's dig into this and welcome LaToya to the show. How are you doing? Very good. How are nice you? Nice to meet you. Nice to <laughs> Take me back four years ago at this Christmas when you did this prank. My wife and I, uh, for years, talked about the fact that we didn't think that John was my dad. Okay. So we decided to tell my mom that we did DNA. And she didn't believe me. She, you know, kept saying I was, I couldn't produce it. Uh -huh. So I had to like really go in and go in, go in to make her believe So you for were just sure. digging into this prank. You real bad. Like, yes. Yes, real uh -huh. bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it worked because, you know, I've never felt like I knew my true father and lo and behold, there you go. <laughs> so now you're sitting there doing this prank. Were other people around? Because this was Christmas time. Um, so was my wife, my son, my sister. So other people were around. Yeah, so yeah. like, yeah, so like now your mother's in front of these people and she's like, oh my gosh, you're questioning me about your father being your father. Yes. And, and you had no suspicion before then. Oh no, he doesn't believe he's my father either. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Tell me about the man you grew up believing your father then. He was a provider, very strong. I went with him two times, maybe three times a month. Mm -hmm. Maybe one of those times I would go to his mother's house and I would be over there with his sister and who I grew up as to be, you know, known as my cousins. Um, and he would take me shopping time to time, you know, and, you know, throughout one of those two times that I was with him, he would make sure he reminded me, hey, you know you're the milkman's baby. He would literally say that to you? Legit, like, yeah. As a little kid? Yes. First of all, I gotta say I'm sorry. Because you. all, you know, it's, it's easy for us to hear your story and be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But you know, for me, anytime I hear a child receiving messages like that or being treated that way, whether a parent thought they were joking or being funny, it always breaks my heart. How did you feel hearing your father walk around and tell you, you, you you're the milkman's baby? I think it caused trust issues, of number course. one, um, yeah. with me and my mother because this is my mom, so you're, you're, I'm a child. I was raised to, you know, you don't really talk back in my family, you know what I mean? Yeah. So although he's telling me this, I can't go home and say to my mom, like, oh, mom, this is what my dad said, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Not That's why I'm surprised you did the prank, girl, because if I did that to my mama, she'd have knocked me. See, this is what I mean. That's what I was like, <laughs> I'm like, you did the prank? So, but like, so I understand that, you know, that, that's sort of like you can't challenge her even though this man is saying this to you. Exactly. Wow. So before Christmas prank, did you and John ever take a DNA test? We did not. Okay. And why? Well, John and I don't really have a relationship where him and I really talk. Mm -hmm. um, as of late, we have been more in contact, but he's such a disciplinarian and I am now that as well. So we kind of bump heads, you know? Got it. I'm sure there's some underlining anger and resentment to a man who tells a kid, a little girl, I'm not your father. Right. Yeah. So mom, because we got to get back to her. Yes. So now we're Christmas Day, we have this prank. Yes. Um, 
did you ever feel like your mom was was faking the information like that she was like you know like when your father was telling you this I have been unsure my whole life. Mm -hmm. So how did you feel when your mom told you that a man named Tony could be your dad? Initially, I was like, why haven't you said this before? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm already in my 30s now. This is strange, you know? Yeah. Like, why didn't you already tell me? I wouldn't be mad. You know what I mean? You, yeah. were, you were young, like, you know? Yeah. I don't think she understands the severity of it. You know what I mean? Because how old was your mom when she had you? She was 15. So she, that's why you say, I wouldn't have been mad. Exactly. You were a young woman. Right. So you might not have known what was going on. Exactly. Yes. So did you ever hear about Tony before this Christmas? No. See a photo? No, I I've still nothing. never seen a photo. Of Tony? To this day. Wow. Wow. So you were really living over here like, what is going on? Yes. If he ends up being your father, do you want to start to try to build that relationship? I honestly don't know. Yeah because what I've gotten so far from him is not a person that I would want in my life based on what he's shown me. Because, I mean, again, I have never met him or seen him. But based on what he's shown me, building a relationship really isn't something that I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I got it. it makes sense to me. So do you feel like your mother intentionally lied to you? No. You don't? I do not. Because I think that my mom made the best monetary decision for herself at that time. You said the word monetary. That what is correct. What do you correct. mean by monetary? What I mean is the person that I knew as my father, John, has always been a person to make his own money. Like I said, take care of me. Even when he thought I wasn't his child, he still took money and took me to buy me school clothes, did all that. So this person, Tony, I, like he didn't do anything for my mother. And based mm -hmm. on my mom's stories of him, he didn't have much he could give Got to it. me. So you don't think she intentionally lied about John being your father? I do not. Got it. Makes sense. Okay. But you do think that she made a decision based on money? I definitely do. Wow. That's a, that's a big statement right there. Everyone, please let's welcome her mom to the show. Vicky, come on out. Hey, Mom. Well, I, appreciate you. I just want to know, how does it feel to know that your daughter was in essence, calling you a liar with this information. I'm not, I wasn't happy at all. She didn't tell me the truth with the uh, DNA. So I thought John was her dad. She asked me who her dad was and I said, John. She said, no, it's not. I said, John is your dad, Latoya. She said, no, it's not. We did a DNA test and it came back that he's not my dad. It just doesn't make sense. Vicky is about to explain why she admitted. I said, Oh, I forgot about him. LaToya's real father could be this man, Tony. I don't know if I'm his oldest child, his only child. I don't know anything. Tony is here. He doesn't care. Tony, do you care at all? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> so we decided to tell my mom that we did DNA. And she didn't believe me. He would make sure he reminded me, hey, you know you're the milkman's baby. I have been unsure my whole life. I said, John is your dad, Latoya. She said, we did a DNA test and it came back that he's not my dad. I, I told her she was lying. It's not funny, Latoya. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bob, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not funny, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have lied, I'm sorry. <sighs> well, thank you. Did she ever show you any results? No, and I kept asking because I said, I wanted to do a DNA with Tony. And she said, just forget about it. What did you feel in that moment on Christmas Eve? I was angry. Yeah, I can imagine. Because my, it, it felt like somebody hit me in my stomach, like this man I've, I'm thinking is her dad. And I still think he's her dad until I see different. I was 14 when I got pregnant. Mm. And um, I forgot all about um, Tony because I didn't like him. You, 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 okay. Your daughter said that she thinks that you made a monetary decision. It was not because of money, it was because of looks. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so Mom. you picked one guy off of the looks, not off the money, because you didn't want the guy that you thought was ugly to be the father. I couldn't stand him. Wow. <laughs> so was there any question in your mind ever, Vicky, about who the real father was? No. 
So even though you knew the two guys, you had sex with these two men. I, I, I don't these remember. These two boys. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I was a virgin when I got pregnant. You were a virgin when you got yeah. pregnant. <laughs> Mom, I was. How did? How were you a virgin when you got pregnant? Because when there's never, a potential of two men. We're now I testing years. Because later. I must have met him around the same time. That's the only thing I can think of. Uh huh. Did you ever think about Tony um, over the years? Absolutely not. What I think happened with Tony is I had a frozen thought. And if you know about frozen mm -hmm, thoughts, it's a trauma or something that's happened, and you freeze it in your mind, and then you just leave it there until something triggers it to bring, come out. To bring it out, yes, I get it. Latoya triggered it. Yeah. Well, excuse me, may I trigger something else? Is there any more frozen thoughts before we get this DNA test? Like what? Like that there's somebody else that could be the No dad? Latoya. No Latoya. All right, Mom. She harasses me every single day. All about this. I can't believe you did this to me. Do you feel I'm like you treat her like you, you feel like you treat her like a sister, not a mother? To a certain degree, because we are very close in age. Mm -hmm. And when people see me and my mom, nobody thinks that we are mom and daughter. Everybody thinks we're sisters. You know what I mean? So, yes, this is my sister No, mom. I'm not your sister mom. You are my I'm sister mom. I'm not your sister mom. Yes, you are. I'm close. your mother. We grew up. Vicky, I want to ask you, in your gut, who do you really think is a toy's father? Oh, God. John. You do think John is her father, the man that was there from a childhood. Yes. You still stand on the fact that you think that John is my father. Yes. I can't get it out of my mind I... until I see proof. Toya tells me that she has memories of John telling her, you're not my father, I'm not your father, you're the milkman's baby. Did you know that he was saying those things to your daughter? Not until years later. Until years because later. Because he's a nasty individual. So for him to say that to Latoya, I confronted him about it, but we can't talk civil. Got it. So how did you feel when you learned about the prank? I was pissed. Because I'm like, John is your dad. Yeah. Then when she did this and she wouldn't stop and she just kept pressuring me and pressuring me and pressuring me. I said, oh, this one. I forgot about him. That is correct. What about the fact that my whole life I, I already thought that, I, that John wasn't my dad because he had already planted that seed? So you were mad, but how do you think I felt? Because you lied all them years. <laughs> I don't think I lied. We still have a young woman who was 14 at the time. Yes. Which, for a 14-year-old to have experienced sexual relations, there had to have been some type of trauma that was in the household that would say, right now, I feel like I want to avail my body at this young age. And I'm not giving excuses, because I don't want you to think that I'm excusing it, in essence, excusing your pain, because I understand what you're experiencing. It's been 34 years, or however, of you being like, who is my father? Who am I? Because I have this one man telling me he's not my dad. You then tell me later on, like, you know somebody else could be it. And she's telling you, like, in my young mind, in my young mind and heart, this is who I knew. And so I think we sometimes have to acknowledge that there was a 14-year-old girl who was making the best decisions she could at that time. Yes, Correct. it indirectly affected you, and I'm sorry for that. Thank you. But she was 14. I agree. You know? Yes. And that's the truth of it. How I got into this situation is I used to babysit for my older sister because she's 13 years older than me. And I don't even know how Tony got in the picture. I wasn't like that. Hold on, so we just received a ping right now, an alert um, from somebody who wanted to send us a message. A shocking message from John is about to come out. He's lying. Tony is about to come out. He doesn't care. Tony, do you care at all? No, not really. <laughs> and the outcome of a DNA test is about to come out. Are you ready for answers? And these unforgettable results will lead to one of the most shocking twists this show has ever seen. This man, I'm thinking, is her dad. And I still think he's her dad until I see different. So how did you feel when you learned about the prank? I was pissed. And I don't even know how Tony got in the picture. I wasn't like that. Hold on, so we just received a ping right now from somebody who wanted to send us a message. Let's take a look at this. So it is actually John. John sent us a message saying, me and Latoya's mom never had sexual intercourse. We were just bumping. The odds of her getting pregnant would have to be one in a billion from the way we did it. He's lying. I would have never came up with his name. Mom, this ain't the first time that he said that. 
So you've well, heard John say before he's never that they've never had me. sex. Yes, he did tell he's, me that he two told times. You that. He's told you twice. Two times, yes. In my older years, not when I was small, you know, yes. but in my older years, yes, he has said that before. I ain't got time for him. But the interesting part for me is that even though he's saying these things to you, he still stepped up and paid child support and did these things. This, which is the confusing part for me. This is the confusing part for me. Yeah. And this is where my trust issues go to. This is why I have the the trust issues, you know, that I have on my mom. Mm -hmm. This is probably why I have trust issues that I have with my men. Yes, you know? I got it, it makes me feel like, what is this? What make it make sense? Yeah. You believe I'm not your child. You told me that you never slept with my mother. You constantly tell me you never could have even made a child that has my skin complexion. Mm -hmm. All these strange things that you've said to me, you know what I'm saying? But yet and still, when my mom calls and says, school's about to start, you need to take Toya and get her school clothes, you're there. You come and get me. You're there, you're there. I, it just doesn't make sense. Makes signal. No matter what these DNA results are, mm -hmm. I wanna make sure I can figure out how to heal you two. Everyone, please welcome Tony to the show. Tony, how are you doing? Good, good, good. Um, how does it feel to see your potential daughter for the first time? It makes me feel good, but uh, like Vicky was saying, she was working with me. I was the first one. Mom. Okay. No, you wasn't. Yes, Mom. I was. Mom. Mm -hmm. When was the last time y'all saw each other? 38 years. 38 years? Yes. Has there been any contact between you two in those years? She could never find me. So this is the first time y'all are seeing each other since you were kids? Yes. Since that day. Yeah. Well, I took Toy over there one time, but that was it. When you were a baby? I guess. Yes. I don't know. Oh. One time. So when Toya was a child, you took her over to meet him? I don't think he was there. Were you there? No. Your did mom you ever was. know that she brought this child over to, for you to meet her? No. You did not? My mom, my sisters, and them never told me anything. Wow. <gasps> Oh, this is interesting. So my producer just told me right now that Tony, you actually just told them that you actually did meet her as a baby. Yeah, I did, but I met her two months after she was born. So you did meet her as a child? Yeah, I met her as a child, but then I left. I don't understand this. I, I left. So Vicky, you did bring Latoya over to meet um, Tony, and Tony, you are admitting that you did meet her as a child. Yeah. Where mom, did you go after that? You said you keep saying you left. I went down to Mississippi. You went to Mississippi. And why couldn't she find you? I like to disappear. I like to go find me a spot where nobody can Mom, reach me, Jesus. nobody can talk to me. Yeah. Mom. Oh, Vicky, what's going through your mind right now? Lies. What are the lies here? I don't know, because I took Latoya over to your mom's house one time. That was it. I never saw you ever again. And did you think at that time, this could be my daughter? Nah, she wasn't choosing me. She was choosing John. She was choosing him, but that didn't mean that you didn't know that you could potentially be the father. My mom said she didn't look like me, but when you look at the family, she looked a lot like my sister. So is the reason you moved away, was your mother the one who orchestrated this? Because I, I know how it is back in the day. Mother was like, oh, not my baby. He's not about to have a child at this age. No. My grandma was sick down there in Mississippi. They wanted somebody to go down there. So I went down there. So something interesting that my producers also told me is that when Vicky took um, John to court for the child support, Tony, you were there. Yeah, I was in the courtroom. That's not accurate. You say you was in the courtroom, but when I asked John, he said no. He said he don't know what kind of games you're trying to play, but that you were not in the courtroom. He literally told me this. Can I, can I say something? Yes, please. Please. He was there. He was in the courtroom. He was in the courtroom. He was and in the courtroom. And I thought John paid him to come and say he was Toya's dad. So we, he didn't have to say he was her dad. That's what I thought, because I told the judge I ain't never seen this man a day in my life. I don't know him from a can of paint. But you did know him. So, so, there, oh, so Vicky, were you intentionally keeping Tony out of Latoya's life then? Because that's, that was the question he of what she's saying. He was a factor Latoya, do you feel like your mom robbed you of a relationship with Tony? I believe that she robbed him of a relationship with me. Yes. I don't know how open I would have been to a relationship with him based on what I know thus far yes. and the interaction now. You know what I mean? Because that's not fair to him. Tony, you did know because you showed up to child support. You knew that she came to your house. You met her as a child. So you knew there was a possibility and you didn't go looking for her. Why did you not go looking for her? Because I was doing other things. 
What were these other things you were doing? <laughs> Having sex with a lot of different females, oh, trying to do what I wanted to do, Ooh. disappearing. But in all sincerity, do you really think as a man that is the proper excuse to give to a young woman? No. Thank you. Are you ready for answers? If I'm totally honest, I really hope that Tony's not my dad. Why do you feel that way? Because I don't believe a lot of the things that he says. He doesn't care. Tony, do you care at all? No, not really. <laughs> I really don't. Why would you say you don't care? Then why did you waste our time to come? <laughs> this is yours. This is yours to read. If you would please read the outcome of the DNA results. Punch him in his face. Latoya, Tony is not your father. Yes! Good. Bye! Good. 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 Bye! Tony, I appreciate you coming, and I appreciate you helping us to solve this part of the mystery. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you. Latoya's journey is nowhere near over. We have those results here because John also took a DNA test. He knows he's not your father. And this second set of results will lead to a situation no one saw coming. You are the father. You're off my stage. When was the last time y'all saw each other? 38 years. Are you ready for answers? If I'm totally honest, I really hope that Tony's not my dad. If you please read the outcome of the DNA results. Latoya, Tony is not your father. Yes! <laughs> Good. Bye! How uh, do you feel that he's not? I'm so happy. So am I. Yeah. I'm so happy. But there still is this mystery now. We're John. He's been telling you forever that he's not your father and he's never had sexual intercourse. Right. With your mom. Right. Right? Yes. Well, Latoya, what you don't know is that John agreed to take a DNA test and we have those results here. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Yes, and I'm gonna be very honest with you. We asked him to be here on the show and he said he doesn't need to be here on the show um, because he knows he's not your father. Okay. And so that's what he said. He, that's why he sent us that message to tell that's you. That's not true. He said, that, he said that what your feelings of the fact that you think your mother has been lying to you, that you're valid in your feelings, that she has been lying to you, and that you have some other men that you might need to talk to your daughter about. <laughs> that's funny. It's only how do, two. How do you feel about that? Well, John's been like that because Latoya's light skin, and he always has said, but I'm light skin, my mom's light skin, one of his brothers is light skin, he's the darkest. So he said Latoya looked white. Mm. So Vicky, all these people are saying that you're the one that is lying, that you know that. I'm not. What, what, what are you gonna do if these results come back that he's not the father? <laughs> Baby. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Because, wow. and the only reason I asked that question is because she pranked she you in said essence. That. She pranked you in essence and said, this is not my dad, and that led us here. So if these come back that he's not the father, what could happen next? Is there anyone else? Is it? <laughs> Mom? What? <laughs> is it? What? Is anybody else? <laughs> Mom hopes so not kidding. Is there? No. You sure? Yeah. You don't look sure. Well. So, okay. Just read the results, please. Vicki, I'm actually gonna have you read these. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have you read these. Don't go away because the outcome of the second DNA test will lead to a situation no one saw coming. 
Well, Latoya, what you don't know is that John agreed to take a DNA test. We have those results here. Do you have some other men that you might need to talk to your daughter about? <laughs> Just read the results, please. Vicky, I'm actually gonna have you read these. Yes! Yes! Let me see it. Yes! Let me see it. Yes! Let me see it. What is it? What is it? What does it say? What is it? Look! John is my dad. John is the father. Oh. Good. I told you that. Good. Good, good, good. I'm glad, Mom. I don't like that man. I'm glad. I'm glad I do not like that man. Good, good, good. So who's the liar? Uh, well, not you, obviously. <laughs> okay. What are you feeling in this moment, Vicky? Relief. Relief. Because I knew it. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I'm glad that you have these answers now. I'm so happy. Yeah. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. You feel relief right now? I can see it. Thank you, Mom. You're welcome. And I'm sorry. Me too. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm gonna say this to you that I appreciate you apologizing to your mom, but you were a child that got lied to. Yeah. Those vicious lies from John set you two down a path that was unfair to your relationship. Right. It was unfair to you as a little girl, Vicky, and it was unfair to you as a little girl. Both of you were in essence tortured by this man's decision to put doubt and fear in both of your minds. Right. And you have to acknowledge that it wasn't either of your fault. You were responding to a third party that made you all not trust each other and took away some of the bond that you two should have had. Took away some of the respect that you should have had for your mother. Right. It's the truth. Because at this point on going forward, you have to realize your mother always told you the truth. She did. Your mother never lied to you. She did. You are a blessing because, I, listen, I see how she loves you. I can tell, you're, you're a blessing in her life. Listen, you're a light to this world, <laughs> Thank right? You. She's a blessing to your life? Yeah. I can tell. She looks like me. She does. <laughs> <sighs> you lost respect. And so now you two have to start rebuilding the respect because John put these doubts in your mind where it's like, you can't respect her. Look, she was young, she's still lying to you. She's still doing childish things. And so he made you not respect your mother in the way that she deserved to be respected. I don't know if there's other things that might have made you feel like, oh, look at this behavior, or oh, we're growing up together, these things of this nature. But my son and I are the same exact age between you two. My son and I really? are only 15 years apart. Really? I was 15. So we had these same things. So when you say that of like, I'm your mother, I understand where that's coming from. She is your mother. So I relate to this, and I tell you that to say I get it, Thank but no more. Thank you so much. Wonderful. No more. That's your mom. And no matter if she was young, you are here thriving and amazing, which means she did her job as a mom. Thank you. you she that? is. She is a good mom. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell y'all this. What needs to happen here is that now that y'all are starting to heal this relationship and you start to have the respect, and you, anytime y'all start to see that respect being challenged, you need to immediately establish this respect is being challenged because someone else did this to us, let's reset. Anytime y'all have account conversations where you see that, let's say reset. That needs to be your word, reset. Because reset. we're talking from, a, from language that was not from us. It's from John. Right. right. And then y'all need to be united front and tell John to step the hell up. We are. Because John <laughs> has caused trauma and pain, and enough is enough. I don't care if you were a scared little boy. Now you have to be accountable for the actions you made. And John, I know you're watching this. <laughs> Time for you to step up and be the man yes. that does not hurt women, your daughter, your child's mother. It's time for you to show them that you can be the man that they deserve, and you better acknowledge, OK? <laughs> Thank you. But y'all be there to support each other, okay? Yes, thank Seriously. you. Seriously. Y'all got you. it. Thank you. Y'all gonna be all right. Okay. All right, everyone. Stay with us, friends. Thank we will you. be right back with more. I'm just happy. Do you remember this story? 
terrified that my son is going to be dead in my garage. It was a young man dealing with major addiction issues. You don't feel like you need rehab? No. Today, Cole has returned. I prayed about you so much, and you won't believe the reason why. You are the cop. Get off my stage. You may remember a guest from my show named Cole. Cole and his mother, Carrie, came to have a hard but candid conversation with my son, Jason, and I about Cole's struggle with drug addiction. Let's take a look at their last appearance on my show. My son had overdosed, and that was the first time I realized that it wasn't just weed. I don't even, I don't even lock my house anymore. You know, my thief lives in my house. I don't understand why he does this. Why do you make excuses for him when I ask you how you're feeling? I'm not the person I was before. So who are you now? I'm a whole different Cole. OK, what about your new girlfriend? Well, um, you're not going to talk about her. If a meth head doesn't want this girl, why do you? So she always yells? Yeah. Am I yelling out of fear or out of anger? Or am I terrified that my son is going to become another statistic and be dead in my garage. I'm not gonna be another junkie in your garage. You didn't have the ability to say no to meth. So? Why don't you wanna go to treatment? I feel like I don't need it. I smoke weed. Why do you think you don't need it? I don't want you to die, Cole. You have no control. You can't I say no. I have control. It's 11 to 24, There's some you have been using. What in your mind, and I'm asking you directly, makes you think that you don't need rehab? because I don't do this stuff no more, and my girlfriend just supports me all the way through it. I was in the cycle for five years. That's, that almost took away my life, bro. Like, I would hate to see or hear anything about you like that. Seriously. Me too. It's a personal choice that he has to make, and unfortunately, he doesn't want to make that choice yet. The only thing you ever need to say to him is, we can talk when you're ready to get help. You need to turn to your son and say, son, we can keep talking. We can keep talking. When? When you're ready to get help. Let's check in to see how things have been going since the last time he was on my show. So everyone, welcome Cole back to my show. <laughs> Cole, I got to tell you, you will forever be in my mind because the day you were on my show, obviously, that was a, a big day for me and my son talking about my own son's addiction. And when you had said to me on that show that you didn't think you needed rehab, I prayed about you so much. So I'm really excited to hear what's going on in your life right now. So what's happening since the last time I saw you? A lot has been happening. Um, I was in rehab for about oh three my weeks, gosh, thank 20 God. days. Oh! <laughs> you went to rehab? Uh, no! Yeah. We're going to give you your flowers. Thank you! Oh, <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy for you. They gave me a lot of resources. Your whole energy I has know. changed. It's amazing. You're so bright. Oh my gosh, you're smiling. I did not see you <laughs> smile once on that show. Good mm -hmm. job, brother. I'm so happy for you. So tell me, why did you change yeah. your mind? I felt it was just time, and I gotta thank you too, so. And my mom. Yeah. You guys really inspired me to go. And I feel like it changed my whole perception on life. So how long were you in rehab for? Almost three weeks. Good job. That's great. Well, the thing that is important for me is that three weeks, or whether you go for three weeks or three months, you've started the mm -hmm. journey to understanding that your mental health, your emotional health, and your sobriety are important. And so sometimes people will be like, well, you weren't in there as long as what they think you need to be in there. For me, the fact that you even took that step and you even went down that journey, I applaud you. I'm so happy for you. My producer told me something happened yesterday. What was it? So I got DNA results back and I found out that it's my son. Wow. So when we're on the show, wow, hold on. So this is big because when he was on the show, he told us basically that um, there could be a possibility that he might have a child out there. Was one of the reasons was like, do you want to get sober for your child? So this is your yeah. child. So yes, congratulations, you're a dad. Welcome to the dad club. Yeah. <laughs> 2400 dad. Already. Welcome to the sober club and the dad club. How do you feel being a dad now? I feel so excited. It's like, it's another like step on the way to sober too. Yeah. It's gonna help me out. 
Yeah, yeah. It's good. The thing that I love about you finding out that you're a dad now is that you made the decision to be sober before you had the child. Because sometimes right. people will use a child as a reason to try to get sober, but you're not actually uh -huh. dealing with the issue. You're not actually dealing with your own mental health and the things that made you to want to use in the first place. So the fact that you made that decision before your child, you have a really great shot. I believe in you so much that you and your child are going to have a healthy future together. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, good job. My producers told me that you have some new goals for your future. Which are those? Yeah, I, got, I want to be a car audio installer, like install amplifiers, radios, subwoofers, like make custom boxes and everything. Yes. But first, I got to find like mentorship first, get like more experience. Just do all that type of stuff. Listen. That's um, what I'm really into. You know, we're here to support you in any way we can. So I want to know, because you also talked about on that show that you were dating a girl. Your mother was upset about that because of the fact that the, the woman you were dating mm -hmm. or dating um, used meth. And so it was like you were saying, like, well, I'm sober, but she was still using. Are you still yeah. with her? Are you single now? Nah, she's gone. Oh! <laughs> she's gone. Like yeah, you're in the church, like, like, you're like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. She's gone. She's gone. The drug's gone. Oh, thank you, Jesus. All right, now. It was so scary at first, but. Cole's mother will join us next. Your son was heavy on my heart, going home praying for this young man to explain her vital role in Cole's recovery. I was in rehab for about oh three my weeks, God, thank 20 God. days. Oh. I felt it was just time, and I got to thank you, too, so, and my mom. Yeah. You guys really inspired me to go. I got DNA results back, and I found out that it's my son. So yes, congratulations to your is. dad. Welcome to the dad club. Yeah. I believe in you so much that you and your child are going to have a healthy future together. All right. So now your mom, Carrie, is here with us. Everyone, welcome. Um, Cole's mother to the show. Carrie, come on down. All right, so Carrie. Hi. Nice. You just, I, I don't know if you could hear, I don't know if you heard anything I was saying. When y'all left the show, your son was heavy on my heart going home praying for this young man. I'm so happy <laughs> to hear this update. Were you able to set those boundaries with Cole that we talked about? I did. Good. I did. And it was, it was so scary at first, but. He did good. He made the decision on his own. I didn't ask him anything about it. I asked him which road to take to drop him off. Good job. That was all I asked him. Good job. And I know and that he was sitting in the um, sitting in your garage constantly and, and, and oh. hanging out, sitting <laughs> on that chair or something like that. How, how's that the going? The hot tub's empty. The sectional's gone. The sectional's the gone? gone? The sectional's gone. Oh, I know There's you. No more of a drug okay, bed. good, because you said my producer's this picture right here. This is the couch yep. he used to sit on all the time. It was so exciting. Yeah. How do you feel when Cole decided to go to rehab? Cautiously optimistic, but hopeful. I think the worst part was when you would tell people, they'd be like, well, I hope it sticks. Well, how about you just be grateful that he's there today? Amen. That's how I'm like, he's there right now. If it lasts, it lasts. If it doesn't, hopefully he learns something from it. But today he's in rehab. That's well, how I looked at it. Good job. Well, I, you know what? I, I love that sentiment that you're using to protect your son in the public, but I'll give you that as well, because I know that you said op optimistically cautious. And, you right. know, I, I get it. You're a parent. You always want to make sure your son is on the right path, but also you were living in the trauma with him. You were living while he was mm -hmm. a, in his most addictive state. So I wanted you to know that you should do what you give that advice to give to other people of, like, letting it go. Like, every day is a journey for an addict, and every day is going to have to be a journey for you as a family member of an addict. So you have to just yep. say, today, I believe him. I would say for you to throw out the language of cautiously optimistic and just say, my son is sober today. And then tomorrow, we're going to take it. Yep. We're going to take it one day at a time. The same way he has to take it one day at a time, so do you. And that's what people oh, some forget. Days, one day is even too much. Some days it's an hour. Ex th thank you. And that's what it has to be. It has to be an hour. You know what I mean? Cole, we talked transparently about it, that you were sort of checked out of what she was saying. Have you gotten to yeah. a place where y'all are starting to work a little bit better, or do you need some more resources on that? Probably a little more resources. <laughs> OK. That, that's honest. Mom, are you going to your meetings as well? Oh, yeah. Good. I go twice, twice a week. And, Good job. Yeah, and I love them. Listen. I go to NA meetings as well. Good job. Oh, I'm just happy for y'all. I recommend everybody go. 
here, but uh, yeah. Cole, Cole, I'm really happy for you. Seriously, you, you took a big step for yourself and now for your Thank child you. as well. I, I'm proud of you. And I, I don't want anyone to ever take away this step from you because you should be really, really proud of yourself. Um, Exen, like we just said, it's one day at a time. And I'm proud yes. of where you're at today. And I have yep. faith, full faith in you that tomorrow's gonna be just as bright. So good luck. Good Thank luck. you so yeah. much, Toronto. Oh, it's so exciting. Yes. Yeah, yes. Please tell your son that he was an inspiration to Cole as well. Good, good, good. Something good came out of your son's addiction. Yes, you know? good, good, good. Oh my gosh, my son is gonna be so happy to hear that. Um, yes, all right, listen, you, well, I, I do love you both, and I'm so happy to hear this. And please, I'm going to have my producers talk to you. We're going to figure out what you need so we can start to help to mend this relationship as well. I'm going to send you some resources, okay? Thank you so Thank much. You. Yeah, you're welcome. You. All right, everyone. This is what the Karamo Show is all about. <laughs> Planting seeds to make meaningful and lasting change. It doesn't happen overnight, but with the work, when you talk, you then grow. Thank you.